Welcome forward, welcome forward, welcome forward to episode three of another, another wonderful vlog featuring my brethren, bona fide brethren, musician, producer, extraordinaire, what, what, what? none other than Patrick Anthony Tenu. And what? previously, we was talking about um, his, his first involvement in the group Matumbi and the scene that was more or less set musically for him and also him getting to know just how the business basically worked for him and getting involved in, in working on an iconic album, iconic album called Point of View, which was more or less, let's say it was kind of semi, semi spearheaded by um, Dennis Bovell and also the rest of Matumbi had, had their involvement in it. So it was more or less a cooperative effort where that album was concerned. To me, it's a great album, great iconic album that, that still stands up today. Now, we're going to get on to the offshoot of that group, which was Riot Squad, because there was, because there was something, there was, there was just something about, you know, I've, I've, I've got an ear for voices. So I remember when, when, um, when Matumbi, they, they were doing separate projects outside of Mat Matumbi with people like Guardian, a Guardian Angel, who, mm. who recorded China Gate. That's the that's the family of Glester and Bevin, the right. two singers. Oh, okay. That's okay. The, the, I think I them sister. Yeah, I, I I I can I can see the label. I can see the label spinning right here with yeah. the heart on it. With the heart on it, yeah. right? I remember that, and I remember a, a, there was a, an obscure release that all now you can't find it on YouTube. You can't find it in a no record shop nowhere. And it was actually um, Bevin's version of Wishing on a Star. Now, if there's any DJs, mm -hmm. if there's any DJs who's got that tune, I'm telling you from now, you want to better keep that tune there because that tune is worth some money, serious money, right? I think I'm on that. I'm wishing yeah. on a star. But yeah, it's yeah. on that. Yeah, 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 I'm on yeah, that. yeah. big tune that, <laughs> big cover that. So after all of that, there was the Riot Squad and um, I think there was two tunes. There was She's so fine. She's so oh. oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Showman swing style. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Cause I, I remember songs like that and um the investigators as well, because they had like private eyes as well as their offshoot as well, singing songs like the folk song and, and all that stuff. But then when Riot Squad came out with I Just Want To Love You, to me it was like, hold on a second, isn't that Matumbi? Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that the same brother in Matumbi that's, that's with Riot Squad? But to me, it didn't sound any, any different to Matumbi. It was just Matumbi with a, with, a, with a name change. So how did that come about? Well, um, the, it's, that came about uh, after the breakup of Matumbi itself. And when, when was that? Fall, when fall was that? out. Let's... Uh, 80, 81, I think. Mm -hmm. 81, 80, 1980, 81, 81, something like this. Okay. Kind of broke down. A uh, lot of fighting. You know what I mean? Me can't talk what a man do. Sure. Say. I can't talk what a man say. And me can't talk what a man do. Me can't talk what me say. Right. Yeah. A lot of disharmonies. Disharmony between the whole group. And uh, I myself had, I, 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 I was, didn't like the vibes that I was getting myself because mm -hmm. the politics within the band was tearing everyone apart. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Dennis being favoured by the, the, by the record company, EMI, mm -hmm. Roger Ames and management, and uh, Bevin and Newton struggling to want to keep, keep themselves above the situation with Dennis. Like, yeah. I, I, like, oh, it's not Dennis running the thing. No, it's we all the way around the thing. Mm. So this is why De Bevin and Uton did start up the Matumbi label mm. and thing, you, you understand? Yeah. And they're going to run for them one thing and the money that they got from from the employers, they would use that money for help uh, sponsor their own thing, right. which is wrong. You shouldn't do that with yeah. the people, them yeah. money, you know? Yeah. You know, the yeah. people ain't give you money for do a job. Yeah, you understand, you do that job there, you can't just do our next job. Mm -hmm. You know, well anyway, the group split. And out of that group there, the bass player, Ethan Blake, the one who, who find me, mm -hmm. right? Clay Stavent, the singer, 
Webster Johnson, mm. all got there, those three got together. Right. And they started the riot, riot squad. squad. And the same time they started the riot squad, Glester and Ethan Blake joined up with a, 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 a brother, George, that I know for years too, but only from school. Yeah, right. But the man, they are bigger man to me, as I said, the older okay. man, right? Mm. They joined together and then they made the Sparkside Studios. So everything was uh, coming out of that Mutumbi thing. The Mutumbi started to break down, implode in itself, burn out. Mm. Riot Squad formed. Mm. So I was in Riot Squad and I was in Mutumbi's because Mutumbi's was like kind of holding on by Bevin and Yutan and and uh, Jaboni, I don't know Jaboni, Jaboni that's up and left. I didn't see Jaboni for years mm, after that, mm. you know? So obviously something must have been really wrong, went really wrong. And Dennis doing his own thing. Mm. Well, I'll come to Dennis in a minute, but uh, Riot Squad was formed uh, from them three men there. So mm. when the band break up now, mm. Ethan, Ethan, Glester, Webster Johnson, Riot Squad, Bevin, Yutan, Matumbis, and Dennis Bovell. Mm. He, want, he come to me and my brother and he said, why want to start a band named Dub Band? Mm -hmm. You want to join the band? He said, yeah, man, let me join this stick Dub up in, band. No, stick, stick up in, rewind a little bit because, okay, I just need this clarifying, right? So when, when, you, when you join, okay, mm -hmm. for those who do not know, right, Patrick's brother is named... Henry Buttons tenure. Henry Buttons yeah. tenure. Yeah, so now, the man them call him Buttons. And, yeah, and and, shot. and Buttons will tell me straight away, it's only the old foot man that call me Buttons. <laughs> call, he call Matix now. So it's all right, me, I still keep it to old, old foot them, right? <laughs> but Patrick's brother is Henry Buttons tenure. Uh, Trombona sure. extraordinaire. Dan Drum and Cousin. Anyway, so... When you when you was working with um, with Riot Squad, yeah, right. Uh, what was your what was your discography? Was it just those two those two singles that came out? No, did no, you we done we, did, we didn't do an album, but we like, I think we made about six or seven tracks. Do you do you, do you remember them? Off by I can't remember. I okay, so obviously it's, 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 I, I, she's so fine three, and and. and um, I just want to love it was 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 the, was two, the main those one. Those were the two big ones, but yeah, but we done some other one. Oh, how can you make me wait so long? So long. Ba, 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 yeah. Ba, da, 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 da. Lord Clement. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's okay. We're getting. We're getting. You be telling me we're getting. We're getting. Nice and easy, right? Please. All right, then. Yeah, we're we'll, we'll, officially. Yeah, we're playing the adults here. It's all right. Yeah, <laughs> man. Hey, my tell you, man. That. You couldn't beat that group like Glester. Yeah. No voice. Yeah. In the whole of Britain. Yeah. In the whole of reggae. Smooth. Silky in the whole smooth voice. From 1970 all along to this time, it, no one's got that voice. Yeah. No one's got that attitude in writing songs. I don't hear none of them. No one. No one's come up. It is good singers like yourself and good writers like yourself and out there. Like Dan, Dan, Dan Campbell and yeah. the man there. You understand what I say? But they, but they, but they, but they, but they were more. I mean, I mean, they were more or less the originators of the style that we know now. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like you know, and be, yes, be, being in the being in the culture where we would go to shubins and go to go to blues dances, and we and we would hear the people on record that would make that would basically keep the place rocking. It's like okay, so all right, so this so, so these are the rudiments that it takes. To keep a dance rocking, nice smooth vocals, nice horn section, nice B lines. You know what I'm saying? Nice and steady. You know something that you know that makes it, but that makes the reggae that makes a reggae sound. Mm. It's it's not just drum, bass, yeah. and a guitar and yeah. piano. Yeah, you understand? It's uh, that that the, the reg a whole a reggae complete reggae sound. Drum, bass, guitar, piano, manners, percussion. Yeah, sure. Horns. You know, Dennis Brown come to England and been touring all that because I've toured with Dennis Brown as well. Mm -hmm. Horn section, always there. Harmonies, always there. If, they, if there's no harmony groups, I, I work with Dennis Brown, tour with Dennis Brown, mm -hmm. and I'm singing harmonies. Mm -hmm. The horn section is doing harmonies as well because, mm -hmm. man, we play notes. 
we must be able to sing those notes as well. Right. With a blend. So it's myself and on this tour, particular tour, it was myself and Roger Guthrie. He was a saxophone player w w that was working with King Sounds. So hold on, so, you, so, so who was you touring with at that point? Were you still touring with Matumbi or was you touring with... No, 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 that, 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 that's, that's, um, or was, was that's this, after. Was that a separate entity altogether? Yeah, that's, oh, with, okay. that's with the next band that I worked with oh. for many years. Oh, okay, so let's, re so let's, so let's, just, let's just reel it in for a little bit. So, okay, so basically, so we're, we're at, we're at um, Riot Squad. Mm -hmm. So you've done like a handful of tunes with Riot yeah. Squad. And Very nice party tunes. Yeah, nice party tunes and stuff like that. So, so what happened in between that time and now your your venture into the dub band, which oh, the dub band and 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 Riot Squad is um, dub band kind of started after, right? Mm. And um, we was doing some tour. We first started a tour with with Dennis. Dennis by himself, right? As, as dub band, right? And uh, we we're going into um, go true. Dennis still had these connections, and then we sure, then, sure, right? Um, we uh, Dennis get a, a single signed what, to what, AMI. What was the single? Uh, uh, oh man, I can't remember that single man. Um, Reggae High it was called Reggae High. Can't say, can't say. Written by words written by John Kapai. Oh, John Kapai. Written on a reggae high, and and that me and my brother hanging off a off a off a balloon basket, and then she's inside there. Okay, okay. Richie Stevens. All right, 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 was this? The, was that the picture? <laughs> was that the picture? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I featured this picture in one of my vlogs. Right. <laughs> Black Bee International. This, this magazine, right, is thirty-five years old. That's why I'm holding it. Stop it. With such care and attention, right? So this is the photograph. This is the original promo press photograph. Yes. Right. Okay. For reggae high. Right. So you need he to. It came out through EMI as well. Right. So you need to tell me who these people are, because obviously, okay. Right. So I'm gonna put it up I'm to camera. Do. Put it up to camera. So you're gonna have to kind of put your head around. Okay. Right. Right. So this is you. Extreme, extreme over here pumping up the balloon. John Kapai. This man here, yeah, guitarist. Him. Before we before we even go any further, John Kipai, the first time I ever saw I ever saw John Kipai's name written anywhere was on a label. And the label was called, I think it was Studio Studio 18. Uh, studio, studio 80. Studio 80. And the and the That's tune and, and, and the tune that was on there was we three are sisters of love. Uh, uh, Our reggae music. Brick, 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 Brown sugar. Brick, 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 brick. Yeah, and Dennis, I, Dennis Bovell and John Kapai. John Kapai. So he was the one that played. Dee, dee, bad boy. Dee, bad dee. boy. Yeah. Bad boy. Props. Underrated. Well, no, no, he's, he, he's not underrated. He was just been. Cast aside, pushed aside, it means that a loud brother, you know. Yeah, yeah. Right? But the talent that he have. Spokes volumes. And it should be all over the world. Mm. You know? But you don't know the business go, yeah. right? A man not like him, you know, just don't know how to work with you. And, <laughs> and if you start, I, I, you know, make it, make it a hindrance for the world for know the goodness for I got one the power. Right? <laughs> right? You have some people stay so. Yeah, hold up picture. All right, hold up. You know, all right, quickly, quickly. Right, so, so this is, so this is, this is the proper picture for the, for the yeah. dub band, right? All right. So you put, you point them out and you, and you tell right. them. Right, that's John as I said. Right. This man here, Richard Stevens, right? The drummer, right? Um, Badass drummer, right? He ended up with he ended up with uh with with um working with Boy George. Okay. Big boy man, see? Yeah. Nicholas Straker, right? I had a hit long time. He's him and Dennis were in the same class at school down in Battersea someplace, right? But Nick Straker had this hit called A Walk in the Park, a trip in the dark. They do like Captain <laughs> Sensible and all that, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's our that's our very, very good friend in Nick Straker. Yeah. Right? Here. Yeah. Jeffrey Scantlebury ended up playing with Curiosity Kill the Cat, right? Percussion player. 
Up here, the big dark man, yes, sir. Yeah. He's from Montserrat. Uh -huh. Paget King. Paget King. Right, uh, keyboard player and producer for Tribesman, the band Tribesman. Finsbury like Park. Yeah, the yeah, 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 shadow yeah, till yeah, it's after, after dark. dark. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Paget King, and then ended up working with the great, the great, one of my, my brethren. Yeah. Junior Delgado. <laughs> but brethren. You understand? I'm going to tell you something, right? See, mm. you hear enough people talking in England, and mm. they I talk about this, yes, sir, yeah. So it go uh, all that kind of talking is coming from Junior Joke, Delgado. Jokes, jokes. Jokes. Right? You live in England a long time. Always in and out. You understand? Yeah. The man there, the man there real gorilla. The man there gorilla. <laughs> right? Who we got there? In the middle there is Dennis Bovell. Yeah. And then on this side there is myself. Yeah. And on the other side here is my brother, mm -hmm. Henry. And that is it. That's that's the dub band. There you go. Document look, look, documented. All of that is documented, right? In a magazine I've kept for 35 years. Well, I ain't even got that myself. Black you know? <laughs> you know? So what we're going to do, we're going to cut this conversation short because it's approaching the 70 minute mark. So we're going to um, go into, uh, this is what? This is chapter three, right? Yeah, we've gone. Well, whatever, cha whatever chapter it is. Right, but we're gonna now we're, we're gonna now extend into uh, the dub band and their involvement with Linton Quasi yeah. Johnson and move on from there. So stay tuned. Boom.